Good, how you doing? Yeah. I'm crying. All right, turn your Bible, Second Kings and Second Chronicles. So interesting facts, Facebook sometimes has funny memes. Have you ever wondered why the homeless population is still alive if the coronavirus is so bad? I'm just saying, just some <laughs> stuff. Because they definitely don't wash, right? They're not self-distanced. And wash means not just their clothes, their hands. So just saying, just weird stuff, right? Weird things that make you go, hmm, right? Second Kings, they want me to talk about my dumb joke again. I was like, I'm not saying it again, Ken. Second Kings 18 and Second Chronicles 32, they're going to parallel each other. She said they're not coming. That's what I'm saying. Oh, is that appropriate? Huh? Is that appropriate? Yeah, because you just said something about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all tangled up here. All right. Pass it on the right. <coughs> so who is Second Kings 18 and Second Chronicles? What's this guy's name? Hezekiah. He's the one we always think there's a book named after him, but there's not. <laughs> there's no first Hezekiah or second Hezekiah. That's always a trick that people like, oh. When people think they're really smart, like, oh, turn to first Hezekiah. Like, I got it. And like, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> Only because it was it was did to me when I was <laughs> when I was younger. I'm like, Hezekiah. So do you know anything about Hezekiah? Kim, what'd you say? That in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. So he was good, he was bad, he was prideful, he was good, he was prepared for battle, he stood on God's word, so kind of like us. Mm -hmm. Up and down, right? Moody. Very moody. <laughs> AKA human, right? So he's also the one that God told him he's gonna die because of all his badness. And he went and prayed at the wall and Isaiah. So now you're going to have, when you start here, now you're going to have the prophets start to intermix with the Chronicles and Kings. So now Israel is getting ready to be taken captive at this point. Judah is getting ready to be surrounded. Nebuchadnezzar is coming and Nebuchadnezzar is the king of Babylon. And that's where Daniel comes in. Isaiah comes in. Ezekiel is there. So you're starting to see the inner mingle of the prophets. So that's why it's always good to try and sometimes cross-pollinate your reading to what's called a chronological Bible. Because sometimes you're like, wait a minute, that just happened? And no, it didn't just happen. The chronological writers of, of Chronicles are just telling you a chrono chronological what happened for them. There's no time and space saying, that's why it says in the 15th year of this king. So it kind of gives you a time frame for us, that just means like, oh, goodness. More boring stuff that the Bible has, right? That's like, oh. Because who likes to read the Chronicles? They would say, read Chronicles if you're tired, right? And that's not good. That's not, I mean, it helps, but that's what a, a new believer thinks. Hopefully, the stronger new, uh, not new believers understand. So you look at, just interesting. How God is always ahead of the curve. Look at American history right now. Some of it's being torn down. Some of it wants to be like it never happened. Who is this person and why is this person doing it? And then they get so wound up, the mobs are just throwing stuff and they don't even know the history of that person. That they were abolitionists or they're the ones voting for the end of slavery or voting for equal rights for women or they just see a statue and they want to tear it down. So why does, a chron why does Chronicles tell us anything? Is because God's given us that genealogy of this is who these people are. So when we read the New Testament, 
Matthew tells you the genealogy of Jesus. Why? Because it matters. Luke tells us the genealogy of Jesus. Why? Because it matters. Because they didn't have a record book like, I mean, I don't think they did. Not how we keep it, right? There's no, oh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, there's, that's what I was trying to think of. There's no birth records of, like we would have today, you can go get a birth certificate or anything, right? And so much fake and fraud stuff that you could just make stuff up, right? So the genealogy, the, chrono, the chrono, chronicles helped us understand what's going on. So the king is up and down, he's left, he's right, he's good, and then he's not so good, he's kind of good, and not, not kind of good. So all those things are happening. So who went to read chapter 18, verses 13 and 14? Kim? Kim? Syria. Syria, king of Ben, all the fortified cities of Judah and the Kittites. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Asgarabim, who had preached, sure. saying, I have offended, turn back from me, whatever you put on your mind again. And the king of Azariah appointed to Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 pounds of silver and 30 pounds of gold. Okay, we'll stop right there. So Assyria at this time is a world power. This is Nineveh. This is what we would know present day Iraq at this time. This is where Nineveh is at. So those things are happening. So the fortified cities. So the fortified cities are happening. So what does that mean that he conquered the fortified cities? The Bible records 40 fortified cities. Why is that important? It means they went to war. So now, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 32. I don't think my nose ever runs until I'm in church or if I'm teaching or I have something to do. And I don't even know if it runs. It just feels like it's... Nope. Not at all. I got a what? Is that what that is? Just for a couple more days, sweetie. Just a couple more days. I'm really old. I told you I was really old. See? This is what happens when you have daughters. <laughs> huh. Well, let's not get carried away. <laughs> so what happens in the siege? So let's read one through four. Who wants to read it? consulted with his officials and military staff about blocking off the water from the springs outside the city, and they helped him. They gathered a large group of people who blocked all the springs and the stream that flows from the land. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty of water, they said. Okay. So war is coming. So rules of war, rules of engagement has always been, hey, you, I'm this king, I'm this general, I'm coming to war against you. So that's what's happening here. Why do people always attack Israel and say Israel's not a nation? Because if they say Israel's a nation, they have to use the rules of engagement. So in 1967, Egypt on the west side, Iraq on the north side, and Jordan on the east side all surrounded Israel. And Egypt was happy to just sit and wait in the Sinai Peninsula. Peninsula. So imagine someone surrounding you and just say, you know what, I'm just going to be here. I might kill you, I might not. I might go to war with you, I might not. So that's why Israel struck first, because they're tired of aggravation. And the rest is history, and they captured, Israel, they captured Jerusalem. So what kind of preparations were needed? Go ahead and read verse 5. Then he worked hard repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. He built another wall outside that one and reinforced the terraces of the city of David. He also made large numbers of weapons and shields. Okay, so what are some of the preparations King Hezekiah began? He had a protective 
So strengthening the wall of the city. Remember, walled cities were important, so we would assume and we understand that it's Jerusalem is what, and not, and then the surrounding cities around Jerusalem, building them up. Remember, we just read in Kings, Second Kings, that the guy from Assyria, the king from Assyria, came down and did what? He took them. All right. So, if you ever done any war times or have played any video games or thought any strategic ways, you like, okay, I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go here. So King Hezekiah understood what was happening, so he <coughs> built up some of those walls of the city, build up, building another wall outside, so give them a little harder time to come to war, right? What about making weapons and shields in great numbers? So he does that. So if you're preparing for war, you need instruments of war for protection, for self-defense. What are shields used for? Defense, defense right? Sometimes offense, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can hit them with your shield if something happens, right? Now, uh, if you've ever studied military history, it's not just a big giant shield they would have. They would have shields on their forearms. Yes, he copied that from the Bible. Yes. <laughs> Why? Because if 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 you lose everything, at least you're still trying to have shields. In fact, in any combat, if you're learning anything, and someone has a knife or someone's at you, they always tell you to. Put your fist towards your face. So if they do hit this, there's less arteries and stuff. So even by that, even by that, that shows us that God has always given us a way to protect ourselves. Just throw that out. And then he also appoints military officers. So now what happens? So this king, Hezekiah, so in verse 6 is where he appoints the military people. So now what happens? The king goes to God. The king inquires of God. The king goes to Isaiah, his prophet. What happens? He gave him a little speech. Okay. <laughs> to do what? Be greater. Interesting, it says... The one who was with us is greater than the one with him. You haven't heard that before. Be yep. So being strong and courageous, the one with us, obviously they understand what? It's not their power. So how odd is it to prepare for war knowing that the war is already complete for you? So how does your heart stay strong in building weapons of war if war, or excuse me, if the battle is already won? Because it's still familiar. It's already all ahead of the game. Doesn't, it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> as Christians, isn't that the same thing for us? Because remember, if you remember if you watched or have ever read the book of Jude, it says, pray your most holy faith. Mm -hmm. Holy faith. And we're speaking in tongues. Why? <laughs> Praying in tongues. Why? For strength, right? But yet, God already has the battle won for you. So, how do we process that? Because sometimes God needs us, or He doesn't need us in any way. Sometimes God wants us to fight. Or to serve the people around us. He wants us to protect. But then again, at the same time, other times He says, no, stand still and wait. Be strong and courageous. Now, I can be strong and courageous all I want if I got a sword and a shield in my hand. I'm just saying. But a lot of times, God doesn't say to do that. I think that when we launch into battle, but depending on the power of God, it's kind of like the followers when they step. Right. Right. Moses lifted up the staff and it split the Red Sea, and Joshua had to step in. His priest had to step into the water for it to go. I actually had just had an example. We were talking at work the other day. I was battling with maintenance um, to fix the AC in one of my homes because my clients were working up flooding, and he kept telling me from the duct work, there's nothing that I can do. I need to get a contractor up there, whatever, but wasn't willing to do that. So. 
I had gone to my supervisor about it, and she, I didn't know, but she was already in the process of reaching out to Phoenix and going above him to get the problem resolved. And so I had printed out all the emails and stuff that we had been, you know, going back and forth with, and I told her I was actually compiling all of my evidence to, you know, bring to you <coughs> so that you can support me in this. And so I said, um, because you've already reached out, I said, should I stand down? And she said, don't stand down, just stand by. And so in my mind, that was like, okay, she's right there, like she's fighting that battle for me, and literally all I need to do is just wait. <laughs> and it ended up getting resolved that day. Good. So as Christians, how do we manage? Ephesians tells us to be ready for the spiritual warfare. He gives us the weapons of our warfare. He tells us how we fight. But yet, sometimes, and I say sometimes, because there's never an all forever, it's just always Jesus, his blood, he's coming back. Like those are always, there's no change. But in our battle, there's always a sometimes. And for us humans, that means what? That's a maybe. That may be what? Maybe God's fighting this for me. Maybe I'm out of line. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So how do, how do you process those different or daily or hourly battles? Yes, Kim? Yeah, it reminds me of when he did say to the prophet that one day there was a huge lake and he came and said, when you pass through there, you just just keep saying, you don't know if I'm going to get to God. And he said, I know, I just know you are going to get to God. It's just the awful thing. Even the small creature that has a cold baby kiss on the bigger and bigger, especially when you So, do you need to come up here and testify then, or what's going on? Well, come on up, get on the microphone so they can hear you. Said what? You taught me how to manage my cries. Just so do it. <laughs> oh, God is great every day. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's been an interesting, well, not quite even a month. I should have known where this was going. I don't do the social thing too good. I don't. Well, this kind of started out. I, I really thought the worst thing to be afraid of, the fear, the the pain and the emotional thing that wiping out doing 20 miles an hour down Florence Kelvin Highway should have been enough. But it actually, the reason it happened was because somebody stopped watching. So I just am sick right now. The last three days, I knew I was dead. I wanted to get up here, and it's all Miss Camden's fault. She says, oh, you have something to testify <laughs> now. I know. <laughs> oh, everything, crazy, crazy things that have happened. Um, First of all, I have water now. I thank God for that. I want all y'all to see this jar, but uh, it's nothing died. I can't believe nothing died. And it it all was about me having the courage to step in and ask for help. Unfortunately, I I don't do well with handouts. It's like I gotta earn my own way in one way or another. And Miss Candy wanted me to play around her house anyway, so this works really great. I guess uh, 43 years of being a Salvation Army retired major, she really knows service, and talk about courage. 
to do what God wants us to do, you got to have courage. And that woman, she found the people that, that came over to fix my water. And of course, my water blew out on both ends. <laughs> the biggest joy ever and I just as I'm watching everything my poor little orange tree just swelled and I, I was like I've mourned a lot this month I, I, I can't mourn this yard dying I got to keep it going and that yard has been this whole property thing is too much for me and, and Jeremy's oldest son showed up to bring his dad's ashes from Idaho and this boy made an adventure no air conditioner, a really basic <coughs> factory truck, of course, during the heat wave. <laughs> and I had no idea that this boy had been saved. He's, he ministered with me the whole time he was here. <laughs> You're awful, by the way, making me cry. <laughs> I've been called worse, it's okay. I did learn to stop burning the black stuff, though, because it just doesn't look real good. Um, oh, God, it's good. I, I get to, everything is fixed. Um, and this boy is coming back in the next week or two, and with his family, with the grandbabies, they get to see the world that, oh, man, I tell you, God is great. And they're going to be here. And, you know, he came to church with me last Sunday with all the stress that boy was under. I'd asked him, and he just nonchalantly, yeah, I'll go. And I'm you know, like, really? <laughs> when he got here, I have to say, Donnie is the one that got me to l start listening to Christian music, so that's all over my house, right? And, he, and the thought came into my mind when he was on his way down. It's like, wow, I wonder how he's going to feel about Christian music. And he gets here and I ask him, he's like, well, what do you think I've been listening to all the way down here? And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> God is great every day, and, and I don't have to bear the weight of this property anymore, and it's not going to go, I mean, I, t I break things, I, I try to fix, I can paint, but man, I'm just not very good with anything else. <laughs> and um, this guy that uh, fixed it, he's candy approved and he does all kinds of work and charges way less than anybody else so for all of us desert rats that can't afford maintenance and you need something you can't do or if there's something i can do i'd like to help because i love each and every one of you guys every sunday i look out and you guys just you're so loving and i just i don't know what to do <laughs> god is great every day and i thank you guys um Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Good job. Good job, Kim. Good job. Kim, I'd like to tell you I've been called those names before by others who say they want to do stuff, and then when they do it, I get the blame for it. But <laughs> it's encouragement. However we stumble in that encouragement, that's okay. Well, I'm trying not to cry too. <laughs> so, okay. So, how do we manage life without Jesus? Man, I don't know, right? I mean, we do it with Jesus recklessly, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Are you sure, God? You're busy. Let me go do this for you. They're not moving fast enough, God. Let me help you. Which is silly, right? It's, it's silly to say it out loud, right? Yeah. Unless you're living it. You're like, well, what's wrong with that? What's, you know, those phrases come to mind, right? God helps those who help themselves, right? Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, right? All lies from the pit of hell. All lies spun to do what? To make us feel good that we're being disobedient, so we need to feel good. So reading Kings and Chronicles, what have you learned from these two, four awesome books? And if you read the Jewish, it's 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 3 Kings, and 4 Kings. Just so you know, I'm just throwing some... Trivia knowledge if you ever get in a trivia game. Mm -hmm. 
Those kings are human, right? Some are good, like two. <laughs> right? A little bit more. The northern kingdom, remember the ten tribes in the north, Squadush, zero, the Bible records, was a good king. Zero. Man, that's some scary stuff. These are people whose family came from Egypt. These are people who went through the Red Sea by staff or went through the Red Sea with Joshua to conquer the land. And meanwhile, plotting and planning, well, let's just build a temple over here so we don't have to do what God tells us to do because we're tired. Well, and then what happens? We see in the New Testament, the Gadarene, right? He's the crazy guy in the tombstones who's possessed, who comes to Jesus and says, help me. Very terrible paraphrase, but that's what happens. Comes from the tribe of Gath, who is one of those ten. I think Gath is the most northern tribe of all the tribes, and it was him and Manasseh, the two tribes, who said, we'll make this temple over here so we don't have to go down to Jerusalem all the time. So we as church people get overzealous sometimes by saying, if you don't do it this way, then all kinds of bad stuff's going to happen. Me and Pastor Sign, like other AG ministers, that we won't drink or consume alcohol for reasons, because if we start, we see and we've counseled people, just like maybe you have, the result of alcoholism, the result of an alcoholic, the result of things happening. So our intent is always, let's be harder here so we don't have to deal with all that. That's hard stuff sometimes. Sometimes our human words get a little harsh because we w- you're not getting it. You know, we verbally shake you with our words so you could understand. But people get upset when pastors or teachers say we shouldn't do stuff. And then you say, maybe like you said, that I remember always growing up, well, what can I do? I know everything I can do. What am I allowed to do? You know, that's that humanism in ourselves saying, well, what can we do? Well, first of all, we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that our desires change. And then we get to do stuff. Because God's not going to leave you that way. God's not going to permit rebellion. He's not going to permit witchcraft, which is rebellion. He's not going to permit those things, right? You know, if a business wants you to do the same things the Bible says to do and you get fired if you don't abide by those rules, what more does our Heavenly Father want us to do? And what more benefit does He give us when we obey? But again, when we're in the middle of it, what happens? Our humanism comes up, right? We don't need the devil to tempt us. I'm evil without the devil telling me what to do. I'm self-centered, egotistical, but without the devil even showing up that day, he might have called in sick that day. I don't know. Don't worry, I got you. I'll be self-centered today. You know, and then the worst thing is we make God human. We make Jesus, and when I say human, I'm talking the thoughts. Because Jesus is no longer human. He had a time he was, he no longer is. Yeah, explain that to me. I still sometimes like, wow. All God and all man at the same time. I don't get it sometimes. Sometimes I read the scripture and I'm just like, what an awesome God. What an awesome God. Because even though it doesn't make sense, it makes perfect sense at the same time. Right? And then you have the whispers just like Eve did. Did God really say that? Are you sure Satan hasn't, the only thing he's changed is the language he says it in. He's still conniving, still a punk, still trying to kill, still and destroy, use whomever and whatever to get us, right? Because who worse than a family member to tell us we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing? Is there a, somebody choking a chicken or something? What is that? (laughs) I need that. I like that. Is it a gobble? Is it a turkey? Okay. What are you guys looking at me all crazy for? Like you guys weren't thinking the same thing. <laughs> just because I said it. <laughs> <laughs> There's another song. 
You just want to start singing it, right? So what have you learned from these kings? Anybody? Obedience. Okay, obedience. Pam, I'll just point to you. You hit the music if we need to get... You got the chirping, <laughs> where people are quiet and they don't say nothing to crickets. Okay, so obedience we've learned. What else? Preparation. Preparation. Explain. Healthy. Explain. Preparation. So how do we process those words and that thought with what Jesus did on the cross? Is there a difference? I'm just asking. Because the Old Testament is about doing and not doing. And the New Testament is about what? Not even thinking it, right? Like Veronica said, believing. So there's a little bit difference, right? There's that there's that balance, right? Because what did Jesus, when he taught the disciples and people, what did he teach? He taught the Old Testament, mm -hmm. the prophets, the psalm, the law. So he didn't do away with those. He fulfilled them and is fulfilling. What would you say? Expanded on them. Because remember the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard this. But I tell you a new thing. You have thought about this way. I have come to do a new thing. So it's always should connect somehow. So when you're reading the scripture, that's hard sometimes, maybe not all the time, but always think, how does the gospel come from this? What is this teaching me? Excuse me, like Jason said, obedience, is that not the New Testament way? Is that not what Jesus wants? Is that not what God wants in the Old Testament? So that's a common thread, right, is obedience, right? So when we say the gospel of Jesus, so what does gospel mean? Good news. So if we're to spread good news, because remember the Old Testament is kings and priests. In the New Testament, we are all kings and priests. How does that make sense, right? I don't feel kingly sometimes. Right. Because there's nothing that we can do, because we already know it, right? We've said it how many times? But when God's involved and God's in control and God's doing things, what happens? He is glorified. Mm -hmm. That's that key. It's not us being glorified. And that's what the world doesn't understand. Because the world can riot, can evil. I mean, Jesus said, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. We don't have a lot of things about the days of Noah, what was going on. There's very few, but those very few things we have is very bad. Mm -hmm. Evil in all their heart. Over and over. You know, so what was going on with Noah? You guys remember? Hundred and twenty years. I know, you see this big giant structure being built, but just like us, right? Just like us. We see the miracles, but we're still not sure if God's gonna answer my need. Or if it came from God. Or if it came from God. Because again, how does Satan because it, it's I was praying, reading both, I don't know what was going on, but it's that very epiphany of how Satan has worked in our lives. Because I've said it many times is that, oh, I can pray for you and believe for you. Oh, I can love you and your hot mess, but I can't love myself. I can't believe for myself. It's totally reversed of what the Bible says. Love your neighbor as yourself. But we love our neighbor more than ourselves. You know, there's been preachers in the last two weeks that have killed themselves. Because they've preached against, or they've preached for depressed people. They've showed how the Bible encourages. How does that make sense? Because the enemy is conniving, and he's a punk. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. We have to be on guard. And being on guard means you're not alone. You can't do it alone. 
On guard means you need assistance. You need the church. You need preachers. You need teachers. You need mentors. You know, every mentor should have a mentee. And every mentee should have a mentor. And it just continue. Because there's always someone less that looks up to you. Always. Always. So you might hold this person up here and this person way over here that you may not even know about hold you way up here. And they're watching our lifestyle. You know, I always think, you know, as an American, it, it's always so hard, the thought process sometimes of the American dream, being an American, being patriotic, loving your country, understanding what the laws say. But I just can't go protest something. I'm not a protester. I just, I, I just can't do it. Like, I mean, I understand. I understand the process of it, and I understand there's need for it. But we have became a society is that if you don't believe this group or that group, then you're not a Christian. And again, totally wrong. The Bible doesn't say join this group or join that group. The Bible says repent, come after me. Now, he has placed churches, he has placed people in our lives to assist us in that walk. Again, it's hard for a preacher to be a preacher if there's no one to preach to. It's hard to be a teacher if there's no one to teach to, right? It's hard to do things if there's no one with you. So God gives us community to help us. So again, Satan's reversing and changing and getting into, and then once you start down that path, what happens? Craziness. I remember 2015 when the Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage. It was like two months after that, because we were coming back from Nevada. We were actually coming back from seeing Lindy's sister, and Brittany was in Russia. And I remember there was a small article. I have absolutely no idea how this, I, I even found this article. But in Australia, they were trying to say that being a pedophile or stuff with kids was okay, and it's just the way you are. I remember that. So that would have been 2015, 2014-ish way back then, and I remember watching people just taking thoughts and putting it on different, and just the hatred of back and forth, I mean, just, whew. and that's not what God wants us to do either. That's, that's that balance that as Christians, what do we do? That's that balance of how do you totally stand against something that's a, not, a, that the Bible says is not good, and still love people. It's really not complicated, but people make it complicated because, oh, you believe that. Well, what else do you believe? You know, I've said it many times. My oldest brother has been gay. There isn't a thing I wouldn't do for my brother. Not one thing. There, I've been to his house. I've eaten his food. I've hung out with him. In my younger days, he was doing bad stuff, and there I am going with him to the bad places. Not really even understanding where I was going, to be honest with you. And like, whoa, what am I doing here? There's not one thing that I wouldn't do for my brother 100% love. But he also understands the standard that my love for God says what he's doing is wrong. And for whatever reason, only because of God, he has only allowed me my entire life to be able to talk religion with him. Only me. I have absolutely no, obviously I'm not very polished and, and good words, especially in my younger days. I mean, it was like this way or the highway. There was no budge, there was no grace, there was no mercy. And yet he has still always allowed me to do things with him, which thank God. I thank God for that because there's no reason me, and as I've progressed in my ministry and my studies and my learning and, and different, of even more staunch in certain things, but at the same time, the grace has been overwhelming. The grace has been overwhelming. And at the same time, more stubborn in God's way. And I can't explain it to you. I cannot explain it to you. But I know it's God telling me, or allowing me, I wouldn't say telling me, allowing me to do those things. Right. It is, but again, so Satan's weird way of twisting love We've said this for a long time now. It's not new. We're not viral now because someone else said it. The way the world tells us is love is what? If you love me, you love everything about me. 
And if you don't love everything about me, you don't love me. That's not the Bible. And you have, unfortunately, teachers and preachers of the gospel saying the same thing. Man, I do not, uh, man, I don't want to be behind them when judgment comes or the line or however it's going to be because we are judged at a higher standard according to the word of God. Man, God is love, but he's also just. He's not just some, just for a, a horrible way, he's not some hippie up there saying love and peace and a summer of love. And let's just, he's not that way. And people, I, I, every time it pops in my head, I remember seeing the shirt. It absolutely is worse than just Jesus is my homeboy. Man, he is not my homeboy. It just, I don't, I don't know why, it, it's just like, oh, like how disrespectful, I mean, I don't know, whatever crazy word pops in my head. And it may work for someone else. It may work and how they understand, but that's not what I see people doing. It's like he's not, he is a holy God. Right. Is he my friend? He says he is. I don't deserve it, right? There is no, I'm a terrible friend. I'm a terrible friend. But God is saying, I love you so much here. You know, when we read the Bible, it's like you see how much, you know, and then we're getting ready, or if we have time to look at Hezekiah, he pays the king of Assyria, takes gold from the temple, takes gold from the pillars for payment not to attack me. Did you not just say be courageous, be of good cheer, right? Did you not say stand strong? He who is with us is more than against us. And I look at my own life like, man, how many times I change my mind of something I want to eat? <laughs> okay, so Taco Bell, do I want a taco? Do I want a stuffed burrito? Do I want a chalupa? Do I want nachos? Do I want a soda pop? Do I want the pea whip or the, you know, the pineapple? You know, it's just, we change our mind a hundred times, right? And they're like, you know what, never mind, the line's too long. They're not taking cash, so I'm not going there. I'm going to go somewhere else where they'll take my cash. You know, you know, it's not Burger King. The Bible's not any, you know, make it the way you want it. Have it your way. It's not that way. But our American culture has told us that, that it has to be the way. Find the church that's good for you, that gives you everything you need. You need child care. You need thoughts of teachers. You need women's group. You got to have a young pastor. You got to have an old pastor. You got to have drums. You got to have no drums. You got to have carpet. You got to have no carpet. There better be a coffee place in there. And I better be allowed to drink my coffee, and it better be cheap coffee, like not cheap tasting, but it better for free. And then there better be parking attendants out there. In fact, I want to be go to a campus one, so I really don't have to see the pastor. I can just watch the video at church. I mean, how do you want it? Or do you want the word of God? And you can have all of those things. I'm not saying any of those things are wrong. I'm not saying never would I say any of those things are wrong. But the question is, does it speak and teach and act and live the word of God? That's what matters. Because God can bless mega churches, 100%. He can, he can touch small churches, in between churches, a home group, a women's group. He can touch any of those. But the question is, will the people allow him to come and touch? That's the question. You know, if the word of God is not preached according to what the Bible says, not some weird translation of you know, the ESV is the Ed Schumann translation, right? No, it's not my translation. It's the old American standard translation that turned into the ESV and the modern English trans Whatever, it's not a human's way of saying things. It's what does the word of God say? Does it line up with the word of God? Does it glorify God? Does it allow the freedom of God gets to do what he wants to do? You know, we're watching that half of that thing the other day, the American gospel. And someone is in front of this huge church audience, not, a, not an auditorium, not a place where just, this is church people. It says, you might have heard that God is in control. The Bible doesn't say that God's not in control. And I'm like, what is your problem? What is your problem? And people are clapping. I'm like, what? If God's not in control, I'm in big trouble. Because I know I'm not in control. What are we doing in our churches? Not the world. I'm not saying any. A church. God, I, I promise you, God is in control. 
God is everywhere. God is omnipotent. I don't know how to say that word. God is omnipresent. Thank you. Omnipresent. omnipresent. He's Jehovah Jireh. He is exactly what the word of God says he is. And it is our job to get in line with what the Bible says he does. And if anybody says that, they're wrong. I don't care who they are. That's where we're at in our American culture. Does it go against what the word of God says? Sometimes. Sometimes. It's up to us to be that change. Is it hard? Because mm-hmm. you're going against the stream. Is it difficult? I mean, again, we say these things, it's hard, it's difficult, but is it really? Because once we do what God tells us to do, doesn't it just feel a little bit better? Right? Because we're not rebellion, right? We're not, no, it's hard. It's like Kim said, sometimes we do it nervous. Sometimes we get shaky. Sometimes uh, 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 I I don't know what to say. And God says, don't worry, I'm going to say the words for you. He's prepared us. We have to walk in that preparedness. Miss Pam? And we read the Bible, that in the last days, these things are going to happen. And we're like, you know, yes, it's the last days. And then we see real life stuff happening. We're like, where is God at? We just read, in the last days, these things are going to happen. We just read that. We just studied that. But every time in the last days, these things are going to happen, we're also reminded, in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Every time Saint comes in with that craziness, God's like, come on. <clears throat> Again, this is how I think God does it. He doesn't do it this way, but, excuse me, angels, let's blow the trumpet, the harps, whatever, where's my people? Boom, boom, boom. And they come against what the enemy is saying. They come against, all of a sudden they fill with the Holy Spirit of encouragement to speak what the Bible says to do. You know, they're filled with encouragement. Say, you know what? There's always bad. And it turned into a song, but I think it's in Isaiah. The enemy comes in like a flood. He'll raise up a standard, Amen. the power of his blood. And the song says, then glory and honor belong to God. Yes. Power and strength to our Lord. Glory, honor, power, and strength to our Lord. And that would be capital L-O-R-D, as in God himself. Not an agent, not an angel, not an essence, but God himself. That's how we have to stay encouraged. Is the enemy going to flood you with thoughts? Raise your hand if you've never been there. See, I tricked you. I tricked you. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Raise your hand when you felt God come in with that standard saying, wait, let's let's, let's, let's take inventory. Who is God? Why do we have those testimonies? Because, man, I might need to hear it today. You're like, God, I don't know what to say. I ain't got those good words. And there's someone else over there praying, God, I just need to hear what you've done because I, I just, my memory's not working today. Enemies got me twisted and over all kinds of stuff. And then Kim says, you know what? I'm supposed to testify today. Well, come on down. <laughs> the price is right. <laughs> what better opportunity but now, right? <laughs> if someone says, God says, who have, or who are we to stand in the way? Now, there's stuff that we have to be careful for. We're not saying everything, right? We're not being, we're not being weirdos, right? We're not just anybody that says there's still a standard, which is the word, right? You have your hand up or? Okay. You know, you're talking about how the enemy comes at us at unexpected times. And you have to pray against it. Yep. 
That's right. And you have to pray that prayer every time. Because, it, because the enemy comes in with that falseness He's the of the that it's really there and you need to seek forgiveness. Right. When the Bible says that he walked around like a roaring lion, when you study it out, it really means a toothless lion. He just growls. So he has no teeth because he is not from the tribe of Judah. He is not the lion from Judah. He is not God Almighty. He cannot be everywhere all the time. He is not, what's that word? Omnipresent. He's not that one, that word. <laughs> okay? He's not omnipresent. He is not all powerful. He must flee at the mention of Jesus. Amen. He must get in line with that. So how many angels fell with them? Okay, so but it's not him specifically Correct. and using his okay. mm -hmm. And again, sometimes we don't even need Satan's help. We're just mean to each other. Did you have your hand up? Thank you. I have people that are upset from one of my posts. I'm like, of all my posts, that's what you're upset about? Did it quit? It wasn't. <laughs> but because you think of all the craziness I've ever said, I think I've been on Facebook 10 years now, of all the silly things I liked and didn't know it had from horrible places where I forwarded it from, from, from cuss words to witches and warlocks and thoughts of this or that from I mean all those things this is what you're upset about I just did you know you can withdraw on Facebook <laughs> 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 I like it sometimes And then what happens with that negativity, we get the anxiety. Am I having a heart attack? Am I not having a heart attack? Am I having, like, what's wrong with me? Like, because <laughs> here comes a flood of emotions. <laughs> All right, so this is our last Sunday school together. Aww. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> we might visit. I, at least this week we think so because there's still <laughs> things change. Ricky and Michelle are going to be here. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm the one with that plastic. No, these are, these are full time. No, 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 hang on. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we got it for two weeks, but what? <laughs> no, this is 100%. That, so those orders from Hill and Utah, yeah. they got squished. So this is Las Vegas, 100%. We're gone. So we leave Friday the 24th, and our stuff gets picked up the 31st. But they'll be with me the whole time. <laughs> so it's been an honor to be your Sunday school teacher. Ms. Priscilla has been my Sunday school teacher since December.
You're out of order. <laughs> so Priscilla's been my son's school student since December 2007, and Rob too. Rob was doing what Rob does, 18 things at the same time. So we started in that, in that classroom next door. There's a lot of tears and a lot of one-on-one -on -one with Priscilla, just me and her hanging out. When she found out, we started Sunday school at 9.30. Not 10 o'clock. <laughs> so. I'm still learning after all these years. I understand. <laughs> so it's been fun. It's been good. It's been real fun. We'll miss you guys. So just imagine, and this is how I think how God works, and I believe it. So if you don't know, we are U.S. missionaries, as the chaplaincy department is under the U.S. mission. So. Everything that we do, that's good. I 100% believe that you guys are part of it. So so if you're surprised when you get to heaven of how'd you get that bracelet, just remember today. I'm just kidding, don't remember today. <laughs> that God is sovereign and God is good, that he allows us to go forward. Seems weird being in my 40s, starting a whole new career, but how long have you guys known me? You know, this is just how we do it. We're the priests that just jump in the water and sometimes we're hoping that the water splits sometimes we're like we're getting splashed so we jump too early or sometimes we shouldn't have jumped at all so miss pam did you have something donald was fun it was fun they challenged me in my sunday school thinking and hopefully you can ask Priscilla later, I'm gonna ask her now in case I don't know the answer. Hopefully I got better being a teacher, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> we would have coffee though next door, I'm just saying, we would, we would have fun. I, I would drink coffee, the kids would not drink coffee because they would drink their energy drinks, but I would drink coffee. Yes, Kim. Good to be missed. We're thankful to be missed. Amen. So the Sunday school teacher I went from Priscilla to <coughs> the Louds. So it's been an honor being your guys' Sunday school teachers too. As Miss Veronica's was one of my <laughs> students who would say, you know, <laughs> that's only that's. I, I don't I don't I don't get other I don't get other kind of students because I understand. I, I, I always have questions too. I can remember us having our um, dancing. Or, yeah, the Hundred Nine at the house. And I can I can literally hear Veronica's voice in my head. Don't take the bait. <laughs> the first night we have it, my neighbor wants to like fight me yes. over a parking <laughs> spot. And I'm like, you know, I remember my dad was like, oh, and everything that was like, and I was so angry. And I can literally hear Veronica say, don't take the bait. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> so have good tears, have good to, good tears of joy, not sadness, not 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 bad stuff. We're we're not dying. We're just going over there. Yeah, it's because of Facebook, and be, it's not the old ways where when I was a kid you had to write letters. So you can keep in touch if you're ever in Las Vegas. I'll ask you why, like why are you there? <laughs> so, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we think we have a house so far, but Lindy may have changed that, so I don't know what, what we're doing. So, yes, Kim? stand up <laughs> and of course the Williams is is as if miss pastor LaDonna is listening and our pastor over here to your right my left allowing me to cut my teeth on you guys and there's a lot of teeth cutting let me tell you <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> what's that Are you us no no myself <laughs> for myself <laughs> learning how to do things learning how to to be so, thank you all. Peace out. I'll be shaving, so you might not recognize me later this week. So I'm keeping it as long as I can. It feels weird. I look like my dad. That's what I feel like, my dad. So let's pray. Father God, we're so thankful for your word. Dear God, your word is always true. And we're thankful for community of believers, dear God, that no matter what the world is doing, dear God, that you raise up believers no matter what part of the world to stand on your word and to be true. God, we're thankful for the Schumann clan as Michelle has grown up in this church, dear God, as we've done great things from all the things and stuff we've done from parties to VBS to Sunday schools to rural rangers and Missionettes, dear God, and all the other fun things, dear God, we're thankful for opportunities, dear God. Dear God, we know that we're always training and preparing for the next level, dear God, and we're thankful that as a church body, as believers, that you are taking us to the next level, dear God. We pray for encouragement, we pray for love, we pray for we pray for the peace that passes understanding, dear God, but most importantly, dear God, we are here today to worship you for who you are, not because of what you've done, not because of any gift you have given us, but you, the gift giver, the mercy giver, the Messiah. Dear God, we're thankful for all those things. Be with us as we change the order of our service that we may glorify you with our song, our clapping, our music. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you can't be in the house of the Lord, then uh, I hope you're enjoying his presence. And I hope you're watching and listening. It's good to see Jason and Veronica. Thank you. Good to be seen. <laughs> and uh, these kids here, I forgot their names, but no, no not really. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Well, we, <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know. We we didn't we didn't cut our teeth on Ed, but sometimes we gritted them. But <laughs> oh, praise the Lord! But I appreciate I appreciate uh, their ministry to us. Amen. Not just uh, not just speaking and and teaching, but uh, you know, in all of the ways they've interacted and uh, edified the body of Christ. So. We uh, and, and like he said, oh, we're not we're not uh, uh, saying goodbye. There, there has been no deaths, and uh, Amen. Uh, we're going to be we're all going to be with the Lord uh, pretty soon anyway. So um, most of this is academic. All right, and so next Sunday, the Lord willing, we're going to try out uh, one of the young people. Uh, teaching the class, and uh, so Bill, come and take prayer requests. <laughs> so I'm I'm one of the young people. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Hi Pam. Yes. Hmm. Kim?
from Maria. Amen. Veronica. I have a couple. Um, pray for my dad. Um, for his health and for um, emotional. And then Jason's knee has been bothering him for like a month now almost. Um, just really bad pain. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Keep my dad and his wife Gail in prayer. There's been no change on our cancer diagnosis, but good days and bad days have been going through some things. Mm. Oh. And Pam? Uh, pray for my neighbor. I don't know his name. I don't know his or her name, but I do, you know, they live there in the neighborhood and I met them. Uh, their shed burned down. But my mom and I are sitting there. Uh, watching TV and we see the sheriff's car go by and then another one with the lights and flashing and pretty soon we see an ambulance and then a fire truck and so mm. I thought maybe it was my neighbor Pam and Mark because they were right there I went over to their house real quick but it wasn't them it was the next one over oh. so yeah. they have horses and thankfully none of the horses got hurt so okay Sharon? Yeah, and for my Sherry Ann, she goes for Jan this week on Wednesday. She's she's a little nervous about it. She's had scans in the past and and God has uh, she's had good reports. Awesome. On the scans that she had. And she said, I don't know how she's going I just don't want to hear anything bad. Yeah. And then God really broke and continues to give her good reports. And then Amen. she's been so good. Lindy? If you could just please keep us in your prayers. Um, we'll be heading up to Vegas on the 24th to secure a home and just pray that everything works out because it's been a struggle so far. Yes, amen. Veronica. One more. The kids start online school uh, Wednesday the 22nd and it's a big change, big difference just that they would be able to focus and pay attention and God would give me the Patience and grace that I need. <laughs> he will. Yes, he will. Okay. Yes. Um, I just want to thank God for I had um, a staff from another home who I've been trying to get transferred to um, one of the homes that I manage and I've been going back and forth with my supervisor about it for a few weeks and she finally agreed to the transfer yesterday and I just uh, for this staff like I feel like he has so much potential and I really think that um, the leadership in the home that I supervise is going to be very beneficial for him and I just really want to thank God for uh, giving me that favor you know at work mm -hmm. and for her, her being able to be confident and say you know what okay I'm just going to take you by your word and you know, and I'm gonna trust that you know he's gonna do well there, and so praying that God would help him to be able to keep His word and to really be teachable, so that I can help him get to where he needs to be. Amen. And I just thank God for the abilities that He's given me because this is not the first time I've taken on a challenge like this, and if they've been successful except for one time, and I know that that's because of God. Awesome. Amen. Amen. You're a woman of influence. Yes. Amen. You good? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Ha, ha, ha. 
Lots of requests. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you so much for the privilege to come before you as children, your children. And we thank you, Lord, that you're in tune with our needs, that you know our every need even before we confess it to you, Lord. So, Lord, we just lift these requests up to you, Father, for Pam's request for her mom. We just pray that you would touch her back. Uh, just raise Ina up, Lord, and give her strength in her body and encouragement, Lord. <clears throat> and Lord, for the Pam's neighbor <clears throat> who lost their shed, and, and uh, we just pray that you would minister there, that you would help uh, <clears throat> him to know that, that you're available for him. And Lord, for Kim, <clears throat> for uh, her son and daughter-in-law, as they are moving, we just pray for protection. And Lord, for these uh, children, uh, her grandchildren, for her, for her youngest child, that, that you could help them to transition under Jeremy's care. And we just thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, for Jeremy's commitment to you. And we ask that you would help him to grow stronger in Christ. And we'll just praise you for it. Um, Veronica's request for her dad. Lord, we just pray that you would give him a healing in his body. And more importantly, Lord, we just pray that you would help him emotionally and spiritually, that you would help him to uh, just surrender to you, Father. And for Jason's knee, Lord, we just pray that you would minister to his knee, that you would heal that knee, Father, in Jesus' name. And for Lainey and Lexi, as they uh, Try out new schooling online, and we just pray that you would give them the ability to focus in on what they're being taught and uh, help Veronica to guide that. And we'll just thank you for that, Lord, and for Ed's dad and Gail. We just pray, Father, that you would continue to heal them. I pray, Father, for the uh, touch in Gail's body that you would uh, that you would bring around a, an, a, an effective cure, Father that you would, they could see the change. And then for Sherry, Lord, we just pray that you would continue to work in her life. Lord, as she goes uh, for a scan, we just pray that this scan would uh, reveal your healing in her body, Father. And that you, I, I come against this fear that torments Sherry right now, Lord, that uh, she would begin to transition from being afraid to being confident in you. And we'll thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And for Lindy's request for the family, Lord, as they transition to Las Vegas, <clears throat> we just pray, Lord, that you would make this transition a little smoother than it's been. Um, we, Father, just uh, we ask that you protect them, that you would uh, help their their belongings, their household to be safe as it that's being moved from here to there. And then, Lord, as Ed takes his new assignment, we just pray that you would give him wisdom and encouragement, give him, uh, give him favor with his commanding officers, Lord, and we just praise you for that, Lord. And, Lord, for Priscilla, we thank you for <clears throat> what you're doing in her life, and we just ask that as this staff member is being transitioned under her guidance, that you'd give her wisdom in coaching this person and uh, open the door for for you for her to share your love for them, with them. And Lord, we just pray for our sister Ladonna that you would continue to strengthen her heart and her body, Father, that she uh, can go into surgery and and. Uh, begin to live a life outside the bed, Father. And just, uh, we ask that you would raise her up completely, Father, in Jesus' name. And for the hides, hides, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would prevent them from coming down with COVID, even though they've been exposed to it. 
We ask that you would kill that virus, Lord, right in their body if it's in there, Lord. We just ask that you would destroy it in the name of Jesus. This is evil, Father, and we just uh, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And for uh, Deborah Neal, and we just pray uh, that you would also do the same for them, Father. And Lord, we just pray for Don's well problems, that you would help him to uh, get that resolved and in a way that he can afford it, Lord. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we just turn this service to you and ask you to anoint everything, Lord, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth and that we would receive the word that the pastor has for you, for us, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Make a joyful noise. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to sing a song that's new to most of us. It's, it's an old old song, old Dottie Rambo song. But it's uh, talking about when I'm down. Oh, when I'm down, when I'm down and out. <laughs> when my heart filled with fear and doubt. Ever been there? Yeah. <clears throat> well, when he lifts up our head, he lifts up our heart, troubles just all roll away, don't they? Amen. Praise God. God is good, devil's bad. Hmm. Sin is destructive. This thing uh, came out of the uh, came out of a laboratory, but it, uh, the, the the spirit of it uh, came out of the pit of hell. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. But you know what? the The good news is, ninety nine point ninety nine percent of the people that get it get over it. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah! <laughs> we got some here this morning, had it and got over it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so let's just lift up our head and let the Lord bless us today, okay? Yes. Oh, when I'm down. When I'm down. When I'm down and out. When I'm down. And my out. heart. Filled with fear and doubt. And I lift up my head. head. He lifts up my heart and my troubles just all roll. Lord really can lift us up. And let's lift him up today. Our God is lifted up amidst the shouts of joy. Our God is lifted up in the sounding of the trumpet. Our God is lifted up amidst the shouts of joy. Shout joyfully unto our God. Shout joyfully unto our God. Let the trumpets make a joyful noise. Let's clap our hands and praise our God. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up on high. Good again. Our God is lifted up. It's a shout of joy. Our God is lifted up. It's the sounding of the trumpet. Our God is lifted up. It's the shout of joy. Shout joyfully into our God. Shout joyfully into our God. Let the trumpets make a joyful noise. Let's clap our hands and praise our God. For our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up, is lifted up on high. Amen. Lift him up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There shall be showers of blessing. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Everybody knows it's monsoon season and the clouds are hanging down. And we get very little of the moisture here. <laughs> amen. But how many know God is in control of that? Yeah. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. We need the rain, Lord. We need the rain. Yes, thank you, uh, Jesus. Anybody ever heard that? Okay, that's not what we're singing, but that's a good song. <laughs> we, need the, we need the latter rain. We need the rain, Lord. We need the rain, Lord. We need the latter mm -hmm. rain. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So we're going to declare by singing this. There shall be showers of blessing. Yes. Water on the land, settle in the dust, but also water of the Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, flow like water through this place. Oh, you just don't know what's going to happen. There shall be showers of blessing. Well, there shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hill and the valley, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come down and honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy around us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, all oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. Everybody said amen. Yes, amen. amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory to God. How many want to bless his name today? He is worthy of all of our praise, all of our adoration. Amen. Hallelujah. What a great name. How many found out how great the name of Jesus is? Yes, amen. Amen. If you want to find out, just start blessing his name. Start lifting him up. Start praising him. Hallelujah. God inhabits the praises of his people. Yes, he does. You want him to inhabit where you are? You want him to inhabit your situation and your problems and your health and your relationships and your children. We want him to we want him to hang around with us, don't we? Let's give him glory today. Blessed be your name in the land that is planted for the stream of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is planted for where the stream of abundance flow. Blessed be your Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, when I walk through the wilderness. We've been there, haven't we? 
every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, till I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be. We get happy then. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain. In the offering, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, or blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, where there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to prayer. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm glad we did it just like we practiced. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, holiness, holiness is what I long for. <laughs> holiness, holiness, what I long for. Holiness, what I need. Holiness. Holiness is what you want from me. Do it again. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what you want from me. Take my heart and form him in 
Take my mind, transform me. Take my will, conform me to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Righteousness, righteousness. Righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. For take my heart. I'm yours, I'm yours, oh Lord. Yes, amen. 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 That's speaking to somebody, isn't it? Let's worship the Lord this morning. Oh, come. Now Now is is the time to to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to Just as you are before your God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me.
to the break me again. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me, spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Worship him. Praise the Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Jesus. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice. Sweet, sweet sound in your ears. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to. We'll let you bring your uh, tithes and offering at this time and put them in the treasure chest. Thought about, uh, you know, appointing, appointing ushers uh, and give them, give them a mask and a gun. <laughs> and wouldn't that be fun? Glad that she she's gonna get to spend some time with them, huh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. Good to see Valerie and Eastside.
Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Reading it first from the King James, it says in Ephesians 4.30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's pretty important, isn't it? I said that's important, what the Holy Spirit does. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. We thank you, Father. Thank you for all that you provide. We thank you for all of your blessing. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you ever saw fit to come and help us and become one of us in our lower our, our low estate, you became one of us so that we could become like you. And we ask, Lord, that you would just bless the, uh, the word of God to our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. So I love the word. I hope you love the word. I, I like the way the message renders this. All right. It says, Paul says, in the light of all this, here's what I want you to do. While I'm locked up here, see, he was in prison, right? While I'm locked up here, prisoner for the master, I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run. On the road, God called you to travel. I don't want you sitting around on your hands. Well, that's with the exception of a pandemic, right? We, huh? No, I don't. I think that's, uh, I think, isn't that? Isn't that for us for all time, for all situations, for every generation? Okay. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline, not in fits and starts, but steadily, pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love, alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. You are all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction. So stay together, both outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who rules over all, works through all, and is present in all. Amen. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. Amen. But that doesn't mean that you should all look and speak and act the same. Out of the generosity of Christ, each of us is given his own gift. The text for this is, he climbed the high mountain, he captured the enemy, and seized the booty. He handed it out, all out, and gifts to the people. Is it not true that the one who climbed up also the mountain climbed down, down to the valley of earth? And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up to the highest heaven. He handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work. <coughs> Working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's Son fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. <coughs> no prolonged emphases among us, please. We'll not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are an easy mark for imposters. Okay, he's not talking about literal kids, he, you know, not, not, hate, not hating kids. All right, talking about those that uh, He's talking about the immature, isn't he? Talking about those that you have to part the whiskers to put the bottle in the mouth. And that wasn't, that wasn't sliding ahead, okay. <laughs> At all. All right. Uh, God wants us to grow up and to know the whole truth and to tell it in love. Amen. Like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us. 
nourishing us, that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. So the old way has to go. And so I insist, and God backs me up on this, that there be no going along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd. Well, we've got them, don't we? They've refused for so long to deal with God that they have lost touch, not only with God, but with reality itself. They can't think straight anymore, feeling no pain. They let themselves go in sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of perversion. But that's no life for you. You learn Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And then take on an entirely new way of life a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. What this adds up to then is this, no more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other. After all, when you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Go ahead and be angry. What? <clears throat> you do well to be angry, huh? But don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. Don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Did you use it to make ends did did you use to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job so that you can help others who can't work. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps. Each word is a gift. Each word a gift. Okay, and this is, this is uh, the rendering of the message for this verse 30. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. Don't take such a grip. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. That's a powerful word, isn't it? Amen. Do we receive this word yes. as from the Lord? Yes. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can uh, be together. We thank you for the fellowship that we have in you. We thank you, Lord, that we have been knit together in love. We thank you for this wonderful relationship that we can have in you. Help us, Lord, today to just better appreciate who you are and what you have provided. And help us to, to, to see clearer this wonderful, sensitive Holy Spirit that dwells here with us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For those given eyes to see and ears to hear, right? Isn't that what John said to the church? He that hath an ear. Okay? Well, you may be able to hear. Fred and I, well, Bill too, right? We, we, all of us uh, uh, old guys have some problems with our hearing. But uh, we don't want to have any problems with our hearing the Lord Amen. and hearing what he is saying to us, to the church. We need to really be attuned to what he's saying today. Amen. There's stuff going on. And we, we definitely need to be listening in the spirit and, and looking below the surface of things. Things are, so much of them are not what they seem to be. Right? And even with people. But God wants to show us how and when and where they have and do grieve him. Okay? He's very grieved. He's very he, he's grieved by the plight of the world. Those that, you know, have just uh, sinned without measure and, and just uh, continue to abuse themselves. Yes, he, he's he grieved over that. But uh, I want to tell you, be clear on this. This is a message. This letter of Ephesians is a message to God's people, okay? 
uh, uh, we had some representatives come by. That's a long story. They, they wanted, to, uh, wanted to pray for Pinal County, so they thought they ought to come to the county seat. And so I met with them and another pastor. It was kind of, uh, kind of strange, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm for people, if you want to get together and pray, amen, we're going to get together right out front after this service, and we're going to pray and dedicate Pam's new car, newer car, to the Lord. And so... Yeah. Uh, help us do that. She's thankful for it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but uh, uh, he is, he is, he's still working on me. I almost, uh, almost all the time I, I say something that a song pops into my mind. Sometimes it's a kid's song. He's still working on me. <laughs> I remember that. Hebrews 12 and 11 says that, that uh, talking about the work he's doing on you, and uh, some of us, some of us, are, you know, we're pretty ornery. We're hard to get along with. We resist. We rebel. And uh, sometimes you got to go to the woodshed. Right? Oh, I didn't get very loud amen on that. I said sometimes you got to go to the woodshed. Now, no chase, Hebrews 12, 11, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. That's, oh, that's when we grieve. Oh, God, why you got to, why do I got to go through this? Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So the book of Ephesians acts as a starting point from which an understanding can be obtained about what it means Hope we want to know what it means to grieve the spirit. And note also, we have to, uh, we have knowledge. How many feel like you know more today than you knew at this time last year? Right? Amen. Amen. You know, if you're trying at all, you're adding to your faith knowledge. Right? right? You're adding to yourself. Uh, and so Ephesians in chapter 1, verse 17, says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And so it's our knowledge of him that we, that we have. We begin to learn what grieves him. Okay? You spend time with somebody, you find out. You find out more about them. Okay? Okay, right? It's simple uh, to understand. If you're married or you have been married, <laughs> uh, the knowledge of his or her likes and dislikes, uh, some of them you learn right away. <laughs> right? On our first date, LaDonna and I had a great big fight. <laughs> and I found out some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I found out some buttons I could push, you know. No, not that I would ever do that, right? Yeah, you find out what grieves his or her, right? And then as you go along, you learn other things, and it takes time, and, uh, and the same holds true in our relationship with the Lord, the Holy Spirit. We ought to want to know more about him. We ought to know what he likes and what he doesn't like. So I'm talking about grieving the Holy Spirit, and I'm certain that, that, that none of us want to do that. <clears throat> so it's important for us to know what the Bible says about grieving the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, my message isn't about that seal, but uh, I, hope that, uh, I hope that it peaks or arrests your attention for a little bit. Okay, if you've, if you've got uh, something sealed up good, uh, it can, uh, it, it, it's protected, right? It's protected from contamination. You can submerge it in water, okay? Right, if it's, if it's sealed up good. And uh, it's, it's a, a, lot, a lot less chance of it becoming bad if it's sealed good. So we don't want anything, we don't want anything to hurt that which seals our redemption, do we? Amen. Okay, you with me? 
So grieve in this verse is from a Greek word lupet, L-U-P-E-T-E, -E, the word that described pain or someone that was wounded by someone else. It used to depict emotions of a betrayed spouse, feeling deceived. You ever felt that way? You ever, how many have been lied to? Okay, now I know who wants to participate and who doesn't because we've all been lied to. Come on, we've all been lied to. How many have been hurt? How many have been wounded? Come on, <laughs> abused. <laughs> oh, no, that ain't funny, okay, but uh, all of these uh, can portray the emotions of a spouse who's discovered some unfaithfulness. It hurts, and you're grieved, and you're wounded. And sometimes that wound doesn't heal up for a long time. Lupit, that describes these painful emotions, and that's, what the, that's the word that Paul uses, right? Led by the Lord to say what we have the, the potential for doing that we want to avoid, okay? So if this isn't interesting to you, it ought to be, okay? Lepeat, he was used to describe how we affect the indwelling Holy Spirit. And he is grieved when we embrace worldliness, when we act like or react like a worldling, when we take on the characteristics of the world. We sound like the world. We have the language of the world, okay? We, we cease to make our relationship with the Holy Spirit the number one priority in our lives and let other things take his rightful place. It hurts and deeply grieves him. Right. Come on, that's good preaching. Right. After all he's done for us. Right. Simply grievous to the one who dwells within us. Whenever we do anything to yield our hearts and our souls to worldliness, and come on, we're all guilty of that. Right? Yes. But we want to be more aware of it to correct. Okay? Oh, Pastor, are you, are you beating this on the head? Are you, are you I'm not correcting you. I'm just a messenger. I got distinct, distinct <laughs> directions to bring this to you. I'm not correcting you. Okay? The Word of God yeah. speaks yeah. to us telling us things that we need to do. The Holy Spirit is the one who lives in us. He leads us. He guides us. He teaches us. He reminds us, bringing things to our memory, uh, comforts us, seals us, sanctifies us, empowers us, and works to produce the character of Christ in us. Amen. He's been sent to reveal the will of God, which is the mind of Christ, to give us victory over all of the things that could drag us down and beset us and cause problems. Right. And he knows, he knows what's coming before it gets there. Yeah. And so we need, we need to be in tune with him. The victory that we have won through the cross and the resurrection. And he's here for us. He is here for us. Sometimes we think Christ, okay, praise the Lord. I'm glad he came and he did what he, he did, and he, he healed, and he loved, and he gave, and, and uh, uh, did all this, and gave his life, and then uh, he went into the bowels of the earth, and led captivity captive, and he resurrected from the dead, and he's ascended up, and although he is omniscient, he is everywhere, you know, sometimes we can get the idea, you know, Lord, <laughs> Lord, do you, do you hear me, Lord? The Holy Spirit's right here. Yeah. He's right here. Okay? And that's why he was sent. And so when we ignore him, we turn a deaf ear to him, or consistently disobey what he's nudging us to do or not do, it grieves him. And it would grieve you too if you were the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Okay, this is a lot, lot of examples we could give, but we don't need them, do we? You understand that? You know, somebody that you, you know, you feel really close to, and if you feel like they're neglecting or ignoring you, you know, it kind of, with people, it, it, it hurts. We'll talk, say more about that, but like, get the context here. You know, we, we need to look at the verses before, preceding, and the verses following, uh, to get a, a better insight, right, and the, this grieving, uh, the verses uh, about grieving him, say, put away lying, verse 25, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, okay, well, we've done that, haven't we? Amen. The Bible says agree with your adversary while you be in the way. While you be in the way. Agree. Make peace if you can. Well, they don't want to make peace. Well, you know, you, you can honestly say, right? I'm, I'm sorry this has happened between us because I love you. Okay? Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> sometimes that happens, right? Neither give place to the devil, okay? Steal no more. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Oh. And you know, we can, you know, nobody, nobody here, nobody here is guilty of going around saying, oh, GD, you know, we don't do that, but we, we can carelessly we can carelessly use his name, and that can be using the name of the Lord in vain. And we've all been guilty of that, right? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. These things grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor, are you preaching to yourself? Yep, sure am. I'm, I, I know LaDonna's saying that on the chat line already, so I'm <laughs> just... Uh, Preach it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay, might as well. <laughs> so Paul's speaking to Christians when he wrote these verses. Right. What? <laughs> Christians are doing these things. <clears throat> are you doing these things? They were lying. Holding on to grudges. Oh, none of you have ever held a grudge. Hmm. Giving place to the devil? How do we do that? You know, one of the ways we give place to the devil is just acknowledging him when we don't have to. Right. We do need it. We need to know him. We need to know our enemy. We need the teaching about him and, you know, all of that. But... Uh, we don't have to we don't have to attribute so many things to the devil like like Pastor Ed said a lot of it we're doing ourselves I'm my own worst enemy and so are you right and so we don't want to we don't want to do that we don't want to do that because he, he he receives that as worship I don't want him receiving anything and, and anything whatsoever like worship for me do you being angry having malice oh well you know uh, I hate to say it well why are you gonna say it then? <laughs> uh, you know they, they, they did they kind of had that coming and we're rejoicing in evil when we do that right grieving the Holy Spirit Oh man, Pastor, can you find something else to preach on? Lapete <laughs> uh, tells us the Holy Spirit has felt wounded by these believers, felt like a spouse who was being dragged through the mud by an unfaithful mate and doing all that he had done within them. How could they now give in to their flesh in such an ungodly manner? They were doing it. And Paul is writing to them about it. And we today, because this is the eternal word of God, we need to hear it. 
We need to be aware of this and how we are doing it and, and, and we can be totally oblivious to it unless it's brought to our attention. We need to remember that someone lives inside of us whose name is the Holy Spirit. He is holy. Romans 1, 4 actually calls him the spirit of holiness. Well, uh, I don't know what holiness is. Well, we better be finding out because without it, no man will see the Lord. Right? right? That's in Hebrews. That is who he is, and that is what he has come to produce in our lives. Hopefully you would never think of throwing mud or garbage on anything that belonged to God, right? I don't think I need to worry. I mean, uh, <laughs> sometimes, you know, we, we might uh, spill something in the sanctuary or something, uh, you know, but we're not, we're not I'm not intentionally trying to mess it up, are we? I don't think I'm gonna have to worry about, uh, I'm not gonna have to worry about Bill finding a, a dead cat out there on the road that's full of maggots and stinking and picking that up and dragging it in here and walking down the aisle with it. I, I just, I, I don't think I have to worry about that. <laughs> but we can bring garbage into our lives and our hearts. Yeah. Right? Come on. <clears throat> the temple of the Holy Spirit is called you. <laughs> you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you know, I, I say, uh, when I walked through the door, I felt his presence. And I do. I do. Even if I'm you know, I live right over there. And so even, you know, when I come in, I feel his presence. But you know what? The Holy Spirit doesn't just dwell here because this is God's building. He dwells in us people. He dwells in our hearts. Okay? He dwells in our bodies. And, uh, and in spite of that, sometimes we're throwing garbage and dragging him with us through some mud, right? And so in this fourth chapter, the sins we find most difficult to resist are usually inward attitudes, grudges, bitterness, anger, malice. And we harbor these things and, uh, you know, they grieve the Holy Spirit. So when you want to, you know, and, and we always do this, well, I just can't help it. <laughs> I just can't now. And sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't help it, but God can help us with what we can't help. Right? And you hold it in your heart against someone. This attitude. Ask yourself, am I grieving the Holy Spirit? And that gives you incentive, doesn't it? To seek Him. And He wants to change the way that we think and live. Change my heart, oh God. Right? Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. Make me more like you. It'll definitely help us to, to think. And uh, so we, we need to remember, we need to be reminded that he lives with us. What you do, you do with him. Okay? Where you go, you're taking him with you. Right? What you, what movie you watch, what you're exposed to on the internet, right? When you choose to sin, we're dragging him into the filth. And so let's make a decision and not forget that he is inside of us, right? Yeah. And there's a difference in grieving the spirit and grieving, grieving a person. Okay, you, it's, uh, we, we grieve the, the Holy Spirit. It's, it's not only dependent upon how we act towards God, it's also dependent on how we behave toward others, how we behave toward others. And uh, you know what? Uh, what is inside will come out. Right. You know, like the old uh, garbage term, I mean, garbage, the computer term that we've heard, garbage in, what? garbage out, 
Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What is in there will come out. And you know, if it comes out, if it comes out just when you barely get scratched, <laughs> then uh, we need some we need some serious work, don't we? We need a serious overhaul. First John four and twenty. If a man says, "I love God," and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he's seen, how can he love God whom he's not seen? And so our action, our behavior, uh, is, it, is it like Christ? Or are we representing sometimes, or representing the carnal nature that God delivered us from? I'm so much of the time not a good representative of the Holy One, and I want Him to help me. Do you want Him to help you? Yes. 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 Amen. Our action, our behavior, uh, and our action and behavior toward God, to a large degree, is seen and known. And it's, it's just... Th listen to the first and the second commandment. Uh, Jesus taught, and I'm almost done, Matthew 22, 37 to 40, Jesus said unto him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is likened to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, so if you're just sitting there and you just kind of half listen to that, uh, as I read it, you know, uh, you, we need to stop and, and just really call a, a halt, call a pause, and allow the fullness of those words to sink deeply into your ears and into your heart and mind because Jesus said that all the law and the prophets are summed up in these words. How important must the message of these words be to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with our entire mind. We won't be doing things that grieve Him. And if we do things that grieve the Holy Spirit, we can be sure that our heart, our soul, our mind is not actively engaged in loving Him. But I, I want to I wanna be that man and you want to be that man. You want to be that woman, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Holy Spirit, flow like water through this place. Everyone that uh, has had and are having problems in this area, you know that uh, as the pastor spoke this message this morning, that, you know, you... How, how many will be honest and say, I got dinged a few times? Come on. Amen. If you need prayer with, uh, with some things in your heart and life, uh, why don't you come down? Come down to the altar area if you need the Lord to help you. Hallelujah.